Isaac Newton was the first to recognize that the force that pulls an apple down from a tree is the same kind of force that keeps the moon around the earth in circular motion. He reasoned that there is a gravitational force between any two pieces of mass, between the table and I, and between this apple and the earth. Newton's law of universal gravitation says that if you have two pieces of mass, m1 and m2, and their distances are apart, the gravitational attraction force between the two pieces of mass is the big G, a constant, times the m1 times m2 divided by the distance r squared. Here I have a 1 kilogram and another 1 kilogram and they are 1 meter apart. So the m1 is 1 kilogram, m2 is 1 kilogram, and the distance r is 1 meter. How much gravitational attraction force do you think there is between the two? Do you ever notice such attraction force between any two pieces of normal objects? Not really, right? So this force must be very, very weak. Which means the big G is a very, very small number. It turns out the big G is so small, it is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th. Now, let's see, in standard unit, if we want this unit of G, we can solve for G in that equation. Now, that means G would be, if you multiply by R squared on both sides, the force times the R squared, and then divided by the M1 times M2, you will get the G. That means uh, the unit must be the force, Newtons, times the distance squared, meter squared, divided by the mass squared, kilogram squared. So that's the big G in standard unit. By the way, you do not have to memorize this value. This big G value is provided to you on the AP exam. So if I plug in the g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11, and the mass is 1 times 1 divided by the distance 1 meter squared, this gives us 6.67 uh, times 10 to the negative 11th newtons. It is such a weak force, no wonder we couldn't notice it. Of course, we can increase the force between the two pieces of mass if we can decrease the distance r between the two pieces of mass. I'm going to make them touch like this. How much gravitational force do you think there is between the two now? If I say the distance is now zero, then this equation will give me a very small number divided by zero, which gives me infinity. Do you think the attractive force between the two is now infinity? Or maybe just very strong? If it is, I must be a superwoman to be able to pull them apart. So obviously, the force is not strong at all between the two. Why do you think that is the case? This Newton's law of gravitation is for two pieces of point mass. By point mass, we mean the mass is infinitely small. For the weights we used, they are not infinitely small. So in order to use this equation for it, we have to chop this mass into little pieces of mass. There is gravitational force between every pair of mass, every pair of little bits of mass. So we have to add all these forces together. That's probably why Newton had to invent calculus to do this kind of calculation. Don't worry, we don't have to do that in this course. When all those forces are added together, we will get something that is pretty close to the answer we get if we just use the two masses for m1 and m2 
and use the center to center distance for R. And if a mass has spherically symmetric mass distribution, we can use calculus to prove that the, this equation works exactly if we just use the center to center distance for R. Because the gravitational force between two normal objects is so small, we usually only consider gravitational force when at least one of the two pieces of mass is huge. For example, between an apple and the Earth, or between Jupiter and the Sun. For those huge masses like stars or planets, they usually are very close to spherical in shape and have pretty spherically symmetric mass distribution, which means that we will be able to use this equation directly as long as we remember to use the center to center distance for r. Suppose we are considering a planet like the Earth, big M, and an apple, little m. The gravitational force between the two would be big G, little m times big M over r squared, where the r is the distance from center to center. This gives us the gravitational force on the Earth by the apple. It also is the force on the apple by the Earth. Remember, they are a pair of action force and reaction force, so they must be equal and opposite. Since the gravity on the apple is also the weight of the apple, this also equals to the mg of the apple. If we cancel the little m, we get g, the gravitational acceleration, equals to the big G times the big M over r squared. So if we know the mass of a planet, moon, or sun, and the distance to the center, then we can find the gravitational acceleration at that location. Now let's take some time to talk about the gravitational constant, big G. Ever since Newton published his law of gravitation in 1687, scientists began their efforts to measure the big G. Because the gravitational attraction is extremely weak between normal objects, it took over a hundred years before the big G was finally measured in 1798, 71 years after Newton's death. Based on the apparatus inherited from geologist John Mitchell, Henry Cavendish built his highly sensitive equipment and measured the gravitational constant. The experiment design uses a torsion balance kind of like this. There's this torsion wire attached to a horizontal bar with two small identical lead balls at the ends. There are two big identical lead balls here and the gravitational attraction between these two and those two would twist the wire in this direction until it reaches a balance with the torsion twist of the wire. Cavendish used the twist angle and the property of the torsion wire to figure out the gravitational force between these two pieces of mass. Since m, m and the r could be measured Cavendish could find the value of g. A side note here, what Mitchell, Cavendish, and others were really trying to measure was the density of the earth. You know, Mitchell was a geologist. Geology was a very popular branch of science back then. From the law of gravitation, we get the gravitational force is the weight of the object equals to mg. If we cancel the little m, we get the gravitational acceleration is big G times the mass of the planet divided by the distance to the center of the planet squared. Now the density of a planet, the density of the Earth would equal to the mass of the Earth divided by the volume. The mass of the Earth would be the big M, the volume of the Earth would be the volume of a sphere, four-thirds pi r cubed, which means uh, the mass of the Earth would equal to the density times the four-thirds pi r cubed. And we can plug this one in there. That means the little g would equal to the big G times the density of the Earth times four-thirds 
pi r cubed divided by r squared. So of course the r squared here and the r squared they cancel. So this uh, little g is the big G times the density times 4 thirds pi times r. The little g, the gravitational acceleration, was first measured by Galileo. The radius of the Earth was first measured by Eratosthenes around 240 BC. So once the big G was measured, Cavendish had the density of the Earth.